Hello, everybody, and welcome to this third seminar of the series I'm Artificial Intelligence and Mathematics. Today, we have as uh, uh, our guest, uh, Constas uh, Sietos. Constantino Sietos is an associate professor at the Department of Mathematics and Applications and the School of Advanced Studies of the University of Naples, Federico II, in Italy. His research is at the trijunction between mathematical modeling, numerical analysis, and machine learning for complex multi-scale systems. For his work, he has been invited to give several plenary and invited presentations in international conferences, workshops, and universities. He has been awarded the Fulbright Award for Academic Sex Excellence. Since 2019, he is the chair-elect of the advisory board of Dynamics Days Europe. He is also the editor-in-chief of the Elements of Dynamical System of Cambridge University Press. His research has been funded by many European and national grants. Uh, thanks again, Costas, for being here. I leave the floor to you. Thank you, thank you Flavio. Uh, I would like to thank you all uh, that you have invited me uh, to give the presentation and uh, Roberto Natalini. It is uh, an honor, uh, a pleasure to be here today with all you, um, also if it is uh, virtually. Uh, so, uh, yeah, as uh, the title suggests, I'm going to talk to you about how one can solve, uh, at least attempt to solve, uh, I will discuss about that, the uh, forward and inverse problems in uh, differential equations. Uh, I would say that a, a, a better title or an equivalent title would be that of uh, Bill Gear of his seminal paper in 1981, about the numerical solution for the differential equations. So could be, is there anything left to do here? Uh, and I would say for Bill Kier that, of course, uh, those for out from the numerical analysis, he's a, he's a totem in uh, numerical analysis. He has uh, developed uh, the, the famous gear method for solving stiff uh, problems. And uh, it is an honor and uh, it, 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 it is a pleasure also that I have collaborated with him and uh, we have a couple of papers with, uh, with Bill uh, and Yanis Kevrikidis. Uh, so um, actually the outline of the presentation is, I will tell you what is the forward and inverse problems in complex systems, modeling and analysis. And I will present some basic elements about the numerical solution of the forward problem and the classical way. And then I will talk to, about the, how one can use machine learning, at least what has been done and what is the main methodology for solving uh, both the forward and the inverse problems. Okay, and then I will, I will uh, present you the, the proposed physics informed uh, random projection neural network scheme that uh, we have uh, actually uh, developed and implemented to solve both problems. And finally, I will uh, uh, show you benchmark problems uh, that actually illustrate the efficiency of the proposed scheme and, uh, as a, uh, with a comparison with more classical schemes. Okay, I will uh, show you several problems from uh, all these and uh, PDs, including the Kuramoto Sivasinski, the uh, Viscus Bergers, the 2D, but Gelfald, and also many problems from all these. Okay, and then I will show you how one can now uh, construct PDs from data, right? Uh, so solving the inverse problem. So this is something very exciting, and uh, I'm looking forward to share it with you. So, uh, before we go to the details, let me present you a video. This is a video from uh, the film, My uh, Big Fat Greek Wedding. So this is the, the Greek guy. Any word, and I show you how the root of that word is Greek. Okay? How about arachnophobia? Arachna, that comes from the Greek word for spider. And phobia is a phobia, is I mean. So it is very about his Greek you know, origin. So everybody comes from Greek, the words, right? So we can continue. Okay, Mr. Portocollis, how about the word kimono? Aha, uh -huh. kimono. Kimono, kimono, kimono. Ah, 
of course, kimono is come from the Greek word kimona, is mean winter. So, what do you wear in the winter time to stay warm? A robe. You see, a robe, kimono, there you go. <laughs> So this is a, this is a, a very funny. So uh, the, the bottom line, everything right comes or from this uh, you know Greek origin, and going back to the complex systems, it's all about differential equations. Okay, uh, it's all about solving differential equations in order to study the dynamics of complex systems and discovering, writing down differential equations to model systems, okay? And now, if the, 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 uh, the system is complex, it's not a textbook model, we want to discover the hidden fiscal laws, right? So write down, discover the PDEs, or at least try to, 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 to see what are their, the, the forms of the PDEs and what variables are involved from data, okay? And uh, both, uh, the first one has been very well studied, but still also a, uh, an open problem, for, uh, especially for high-dimensional systems. And the second is what is now in the, in the, uh, in the forefront of research in, uh, uh, of many international groups. Okay? So um, actually about the forward and inverse problem, so everybody you know, starts from the detailed physics. Here we have, for example, molecular dynamics. And then from the kinetics of this dynamics, we want to construct a mesoscale model that is a small Kowski or a Fokker Planck solution about the probabilities of the emergent vari variables that uh, are due to the interactions at the atomic level. And then if we are lucky and if we, you know, we have a little bit also the help of Landau, uh, we can try to write down. Uh, partial differential equation. So think, for example, the Navier-Stokes, right? The Navier-Stokes, actually, they are particles in the, in, in, in the, in the uh, moving, okay? Then we pass to a mesoscopic description, which is an aggregate of these particles, which is the, the lattice Boltzmann in Navier-Stokes. And then uh, uh, from the lattice Boltzmann model, we jump to the Navier-Stokes equation, which are the PDs. Right? So the whole grail of uh, complex systems modeling analysis is exactly if we have a very good model at the microscopic uh, level, let's say molecular dynamic simulator, we would like to find the closures that jump from the mesoscopic description, like the lattice Boltzmann description, and then from this to close the system in the PDs, like discovering the Newton law, right? the analogy of the stress and the gradient of the velocity, for example, in an, for, for striking, let's say, the navier stokes for Newtonian fluids. Okay? And this is the whole gray, but of course we are not Ladau, and uh, we like to do something about that, right? From going from bridging these, these scales. So, um, of course, things are more complicated, and in 1944, Schrodinger, in his famous book, uh, in, in German, was ist Leben? So what is life? He starts from the fundamental PD that we know, the Schrodinger equation, and he says that if we want to model things, we better start from there, from the Gvadum level, right? So things are even more complicated than starting from the state of the art, let's say, of the molecular dynamics code, okay? Now, it's about, I said, it's about dynamics, right? So if you think, what is the simplest way to describe dynamics or these, right? Or the differential equation or more general initial value problems. So if, we, if I have, for example, an initial value problem of, of say, M observables, okay? For example, densities, uh, uh, mean velocity, right? So I have the dynamics in the form of M, let's say, first, uh, or the differential equation, this is in the canonical form. And um, um, f, I suppose to be continuous multivariate functions in some closed domain d of the space, okay, containing a point x0, y0. Then if f is, is a Lipschitz continuous function in this domain, then 
uh, it can be proven that there exists a unique uh, continuously differential function which satisfies the model. So we can find actually the solution of this. And for this uh, differential equation, for this dynamical model, the sequence of functions that define recursively, starting from initial condition, and they are uh, defined recursively using this kind of expression involving an integral term that has is a function of the previous step recursively, then it can be proven that this sequence of solutions converges uniformly in the interval d to the actual solution of the system. So the only thing is that the, the, the solution of the system is unique and this is actually satisfied uh, by the Lipschitz condition. Okay, and for this model, okay, this uh, system of ODEs, there exist terrific methods starting from the simplest one for time integration, starting from the explicit Euler, we can go to more implicit Euler, we can go to Ranzekata methods of, of variable orders, and of course, if things uh, become uh, more demanding, we can use more advanced techniques like multi-step methods like the Adam, Adams Bosworth, Adams Moulton, which is implicit. And the idea is to approximate actually this integral this is all about with um, numerical methods like the trapezoidal rule, for example, right? Do an uh, uh, interpolation. And all the thing is actually um, computing this, this uh, interval, right? And then, I'm sorry, uh, and then even if we are having stiff problems, okay, uh, for example, the uh, as those described in the celebrated paper of Sampini and Gear, uh, what are stiff problems? Are, are problems, initial problems, which integration is difficult uh, without any apparent reason. Difficult if you put, let's say, a room kekuta of explicit lawyer, you will need many, many small step sizes in order to be uh, able to accurately um, uh, approximate uh, the solution of these systems, right? And uh, I, here I have to say that stiffness should not be confused with the presence of steep gradients. If you remember, for example, in couple of oscillators, we have the Banter pole. There are some very steep gradients that resemble singularities. But exactly as Sabine Gia showed, in this steep gradient, there is no stiffness. And stiffness is just on the, on the, flat, uh, on, on the flat solution. Okay? And here is some, um, a photo several years ago with uh, Bill Gear and Yannis Kevrekidis at Princeton University. This, we are all smiling after an acceptance of uh, one of uh, our papers. And uh, uh, what I want to say that exactly for steep systems, there exists, for example, the gear method, right, for solving that. Okay, this is a classical thing. And then if we move to PDs, then, okay, well, then we have an initial value problem with boundary conditions, and we have the L as the partial differential operator acting on the uh, on on u and, and f is a generally nonlinear function that contains also um, uh, uh, differential operators or uh, nonlinear reaction terms okay and actually uh, after we use all these terrific uh, numerical methods to discretize in space and in time use for example spectral methods or finite elements finite difference etc we end up with solving actually if these are nonlinear, uh, a big system of algebraic, let's say we're solving the uh, steady state problem, uh, nonlinear equations, and then we can resort to a uh, kind of subspace method to iterative linear algebra to solve also large scales of systems, right? And for example, if we can use finite elements to, to, to expand the solution based on some uh, appropriate basis functions, okay? And then actually uh, we, we, we put this basis function approximation in our uh, PD, and then we solve a minimization problem of the weighted residuals, for example, uh, if we want to use the Galeric method of weighted residuals, all right? Uh, this is just an introductory, say that there are terrific tools that we can solve for both of these, or this and PD. So this is the forward problem, okay? So we want to develop methods in order to solve this 
complex, complicated and large scale high dimensional systems, right? And then uh, over the years, uh, parallel with the numerical methods and most intensively in the, in the last years, there is a, this uh, theoretical and technolo technological advances that have allowed new breakthroughs in the way that we see and solve things. Okay? And uh, this is the area of, uh, of machine learning, of coupling machine learning, numerical analysis, uh, and physical mathematics in order to solve the, both the forward and inverse problems in differential equations for complex systems. Okay? A, a terrific review on the subject is from Karniadakis Kevrekidis et al. in uh, Nature Reviews about physics in form machine learning. But the idea comes from the late 90s. Okay? The, the first papers, again, from Yanis Kevrekidis, from Lagaris and Fotiadis, again, from Kevrekidis. And actually, the idea uh, back then is that uh, we can kind of transform, engineer, see the numerical analysis methods that they have been used, like the Runge Kuta, as a neural network. And this is what Yanis did in 1992. Actually, he constructed a neural network that approximates, that is the same, gives as, a, as an output the Runge Kuta uh, output. Okay, so he constructed the Runke Kut equations using a neural network, and that was an amazing. And then in, in another paper of, of Yanis, on 1998, is the first time that one introduced convolutional neural networks because he introduces introduced the stamp. This is about convolutional neural networks, the, the, the stencil stamp of finite differences into D, right? And he implemented this. As a, as, a, uh, as a neural network. So actually, if you think, right, we can transform the algorithms that we all know and love from numerical analysis into stru structure ad hoc homemade neural uh, networks, okay? In the last years, though, with the advances in technological uh, uh, advances and theoretical, we had uh, deep learning, and what is called physics in form neural networks, that the, uh, uh, where the term was coined by uh, the group of uh, and Karniadakis of, of Brown, okay, where actually th they use deep learning to solve both the forward and the inverse problems, right? So you have data, you, you take many layers, and I will uh, uh, refer to this, what is a deep uh, neural network, and then you, you, you can approximate any dynamics. And this has been proven actually theoretically, right? That actually shallow uh, neural networks can approximate with any accuracy smooth nonlinear functions. Of course, if the dimension of the elements of the neurons goes to infinity or at least it's very high, okay? And if we add more layers, then we can learn more things, okay? So imagine that a layer, you give images, Right? It's like you, you treat the, the computer as a small kid and you start to feed him with images and one image and one layer uh, learns the cats, one layer learns the dogs, another layer uh, learns the horses. Okay? The different types of, of, of horses, dogs and cats. Okay? So suppose that you have a, a, a big now deep learning that learns also other things, like learns words, all right? And different languages maybe. Okay? So the thing is that... Um, uh, all the all the set, as I will explain, uh, uh, suffers from the case of dimensionality. So going back to the let's say this, let's uh, 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 come back to Earth and talk about let's say the solution of differential problems. Then if you have this kind of uh, of structure, then what one can do is psi here is our neural network. Okay, the output of the neural network. So the output of the neural network takes as inputs as takes, as happens in the partial differential equation, let's say the X, okay, the input space, all right? And you want to find the solution. So you assume a solution depending on the input space, we call it as Psi, but this now it's a neural network. And then we plug this neural network into uh, the differential equation, okay? Instead of you now, you, it's a neural network that approximates you, right? And at the end of the day, we have this equation that we want to minimize with respect to the parameters of the neural network, the weights, the other high parameters of the system, even 
if you know the optimization algorithm that we're going to use, okay? And we hope that we have enough data in order to find, to convert to the appropriate weights, the parameters of the network in order to be able to approximate our, our function, okay? The solution of the PD. What is the problem? The problem is how it works, right? So we give training data. So here X is the variable, the, the discretization, the grid. Y, let's say it is the, the, the points in the solution. Then we assume a, a structure, a neural network. This is with one hidden layer. And then we solve an optimization problem. And with the training, you, we, we find these Ws, right? And uh, here are all the Ws uh, that they appear here and on the output layer here uh, and also the could be the also the biases but also parameters of the let's say the g function which is called activation function it could be a gaussian kernel or sigmoidal function that has some parameters which which that are called hyper parameters and we should uh, actually um, uh, find their optimal values in order to approximate the output in the desired uh, approximation uh, accuracy so here is a cartoon that i love uh, it is a cartoon by Saul Steinberg. It's from 1968. And the title of the, of the cartoon is The Cares of Dimensionality in Life. Okay? And we all know that every day we take decisions and we have to take decisions take, uh, having different inputs. Eh? And never, none of our decision is global optimum. Right? So, think that if we go in the future, right? Or we can say I could take a, a, a better decision, but I didn't have the information right then to take an optimal decision. So our decisions are, um, are, are, are suboptimal. Now, the, the case of dimensionality is an easier problem, like the problems that we are doing in research, the decision of life. Uh, it comes from the input dimension of the problem, the number of the neurons in the hidden layer, and if we have many hidden layers, the problem becomes even more bigger, the non-convexity of, of the optimization problem, and then dimension of the, of the hyperparameters. So there is a problem of finding an optimal solution. Maybe we, we, we will not find, or, or we need many runs, okay, to find this, and this increases a lot the computational cost. Now, the idea of what I will present you comes from the early 90s, okay? And uh, it's about um, randomizing the initial, the internal weights of our neural network. So at the, at the beginning, this started as experiment, experimentation. So they said, we had the theorem that the, the neural networks are universal approximators, right? But not in any point of this proof, right? there is the choice of the optimization algorithm. It is just says that we can, one of the, we can take the vice trust, for example, approach to, 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 to approve that there is no optimization there, all right? So they, they said, what about fixing these guys here, fixing these weights? Let's see the performance. And this is what Smith in 1992 did. So he fixed the weights. He just trained the, uh, the, the, the weights of the output layer, so he had, he had a dramatically dimensionality reduction in the parameters that they had to learn. And out of surprise, he found out that they, they behave as good as the conventional, uh, until then, structures. Okay? And then Pao, in 92, came and proved theoretically that these structures are universal approximations as the classical ones. Okay? Uh, and they, they have introduced the random vector functional link networks. Okay, and then Ijelink in 1995 proved that random vector functional link networks are universal approximators from continuous functions on bound and finite dimensional sets. Okay, and then based on this concept in 2002, uh, Zeiger introduced the, what is called echo state neural networks or reservoir computing, and more recently, Huang introduced the extreme learning machines. Actually, the basic idea of all the schemes are very similar in, in structure. They have some small details, I mean, about the connections or so, but they are similar as a, uh, as a concept. That is the fixed, the internal weights, okay? All the internal weights up to output, right? And then remain with learning just few variables instead of learning the whole 
space. And actually, I will present you this is actually uh, a linear least squares problem for regression problems. For differential problems, is a nonlinear one, and this is what I will present you. Okay? So, what all of these methods rely on, and this is not many well, I mean, established to the community, is because of this uh, theorem, which is the Johnson and Lindestrauss theorem, which says that if we have a set of points, and endpoints in RD in some dimension, then there exists a map, which is a deterministic map actually, there is nothing about randomness here, such that the map preserves the distances in another, in another dimensional space that is in K space. So the distance of the points in this space are preserved in an interval of one plus minus epsilon, okay, in, in the map. The, the thing is that the above theorem is deterministic, but when Johnson and Lindes has proved that, and you go into the proof, that you, you will see out of, of surprise that the proof relies on probabilistic techniques that were combined with the kids browns theorem to, to yield the so-called extensional mapping. And actually, one of the key points is this lemma there, where they actually take an, a matrix R, which is actually constructed... Uh, uh, its elements are random variables, sampled from a normal distribution, and here is your map. Actually, you take the input uh, uh, vector, you, you do this uh, uh, random projection, and here is your map. Okay, and it can be proven that if R is, is big enough, okay, as a matrix, then the, the, the distances in, uh, in, uh, in this space are preserved. And I have to say that now the, 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 the kappa can be, the kappa dimension can be lower than the D dimension or higher than the D dimension in analogy to kernel-based manifold learning algorithms like kernel PCA, all right? So we can project on a low dimension or higher dimensional space, okay? So I will present you now the numerical solution of, of ODs, okay? So if you have ODs in the canonical form, uh, we can, uh, then one can write a, a trial function. The trial function has two components. This component is about the initial conditions that we know. And another component is the uh, approximation, actually, of the, of, of the solution with the neural network in time until time t. Okay? And here we have used a single layer structure that is a single layer fit for a neural network that resembles an extreme learning machine but also a, a, a random link vector functional network is the same thing. And actually, the, the, the W size are, are the, the weight that we have to train in order to find this, uh, this approximated solution to my Y, okay? And uh, what we can do is plug Psi, right, into the differential operator in my system of all this, and we have to solve this, uh, this optimization uh, problem, okay? And uh, what we can do actually here, our choice is to create a network, a random projection in your network, using a Ga Ga Gaussian kernels, okay? So you see the Gaussian kernels, the, the only thing here, so here time is the input variable, WJI are the input weights from the input to the hidden layer, which is the unique, okay? And uh, uh, actually these things here, in order to get rid of, 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 uh, uh, of the problem of nonlinearity uh, and solving a, a two, uh, layer optimization problem, we fix them to ones, okay, to one. They are fixed. They are also fixed, uh, the Bs, the biases, and Cs are, you know, in the Gaussian, these are the center, so we distribute this as, as a grid in the interval where we want to solve our solution, okay? And by doing this, actually, uh, you, you see here also, sorry, let me go back. These weights are the weights from the hidden layer to the output layer. And actually, these are linear, right? It's a basis function expansion, and they are the finite elements, okay? And what we want to do is plug this expression, right, into the differential equation and find this WGI, uh, I, right? And this is the whole, the, 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 the whole idea, all right? 
So actually, the, the nice thing here that all the quantities that, I, that we want to solve this optimization problem, we can derive analytically because we have an analytical expression of our neural network because the a, a basis function expansion and we know analytically the kernel and then we can compute all the derivatives with respect to the input but also with respect to the weights okay and by, by doing this at the end of the day we can write the neural network as a random projection right of the input weights okay of the of the output weights so, and the, the RIs are, is the matrix, the random matrix created exactly by, by this, by the, the, the basis functions, the kernel basis functions. Now, see that this is how it, it, it end up. Here, the, the parameters will, uh, here the same parameter is chosen randomly appropriately randomly of course from a uniform distribution so everything here is deterministic cj is the grid in the time interval and sigma that is the variance of your gauss of our gaussian kernel it is not fixed values but they are selected iid from a uniform distribution so we create and this is the same the same expression as we saw in the lemma okay and uh, and then uh, by doing this, uh, actually, we end up with a system of, uh, of, of, of uh, nonlinear algebraic equations with respect to the only unknowns that are the weights of the output uh, of, uh, between the hidden and the output layer. All right? And then we can solve that using Newton Rapson, for example. All right? So this is actually the general framework of the network. So the only announce uh, that the problem is solved like a nonlinear least squares problem. Okay, and the only announce now are the tables, and we can uh, resort to Newton uh, Raphson methods or Newton Gauss methods in order to uh, to solve this uh, problem. The thing is, but the, the construction from the random construction of of of, of our function, we don't assure as in finite elements that uh, this matrix or these are orthogonal between them no? on the contrary because we randomly space randomly sample the space we expect that some basis functions are similar so we expect that this matrix is ill or close to be ill defined okay but from numerical analysis uh, uh, theory we don't have a problem for example we can compute the pseudo inverse by uh, uh, taking the singular value decomposition um, of the of the matrix of the random projection matrix that is selecting all the the uh, the, uh, the, the the left and right again vectors that correspond to singular values up to uh, above a certain threshold. Okay, so this is not a problem. About the convergence, I will not to go to details, but for the particular uh, random projection neural network, uh, it can be proved, and this is what we have proven, that uh, actually it converges to any Lipschitz continuous function with a probability that is given with this term of delta probability. Of course, if you see here, if, you, if we take more n, so the, 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 the better accuracy we have, right? Uh, 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 on this scheme now, because to deal with sharp gradient and stiff problems, we have adapted, we have plugged in a simple adaptation scheme, okay? And the simple adaptation scheme is, so at the end, uh, as I showed you, you leave a, new, a Newton's problem, right? But the Newton problem, if your, your interval is big enough, so if you have a very sharp gradient or you have a very stiff uh, system in, in, in the interval that you show, maybe you don't converge for the number of, of, of points of the collocation points that you use, right? So you need to have to, to, to take small interval. This is, for example, what the adaptive schemes do, or uh, the, the variable time step schemes for solving uh, the, uh, stiff problems, right? Here, uh, so we pick an interval, we don't know if it converges. If it will not converge, we have the interval. Okay, we do again Newton Raphson iterations. We know that they should converge quadratically. So after, if they don't converge after four iterations, we have again the interval until we converge. Okay, when we converge, we, then we can expand back to the, to the double. Okay, so this is a, a, a very simple adaptation scheme. And here are the benchmark problems. So I'll show you the some pin gear problem, the Van der Poel equation, the highest problem, and then I will also. Uh, uh, 
say about the approximation accuracy and the computational time. So the 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 gear pro the 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 pin gear problem is called also Prothero Robinson is this. It's very simple. It has an analytical solution. See that here for whatever function I uh, phi that I choose, it satisfies directly this equation, and I have the analytical equation. So lambda uh, it should be chosen negatively, negative, and very big in order to have a, a stiff problem. And here we have chosen, for example, the uh, phi of t, the sign, and we have used the methodology in order to approximate this um, uh, the, the solution that we know analytically what it is. Okay. And here is the approximation, so this is the analytical, the sign function. And here, as you see, uh, uh, with the magenta is our scheme, with uh, uh, dotted is the OD15S from the MATLAB. Uh, you see here some, some divergence, right, from the, from the real, why the Runge Kuta completely fails when lambda is set to minus uh, 100,000 in the interval 0 to point T. Uh, to P. And here is something uh, very nice. So the random projection in the network has the better accuracy of all schemes, also from the OD15S. And with respect to the computational cost, no, that now this is very interesting. It has also the lowest computational cost of the uh, MATLAB functions built in solvers. And I would say that OD15S is a stiff solver for low dimensional systems. So our proposed scheme actually uh, behaves better. The second problem is the Van der Poel. It is known that is a problem that now uh, it has both stiff, stiff behavior and subgradients. So you see here the subgradients of, 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 of the problem that resembles singularity. And you see, uh, so the reference solution is the one that we have uh, taken with the OD15S with the stiff solver with an accuracy of 10 to the minus, minus, minus 14. Okay, while the other here are, uh, are for 10 minus 6, the tolerances. So you see here that the OD15S with the stiff solver fails. Okay, the, 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 the difference between the true and, uh, and, and the, what uh, has been solved is, is big. Okay, and the OD45, as you'll see, it needs huge numbers uh, of steps in order to converge. And, and all this can be summarized in this table. So let's go to the more stiff problem. And when we take, for example, uh, 10 minus three, our scheme, if we take the L2 norm, it's about four, while the OD15 is about 1,000, right? And the Runge Kuta does better, but the, as you will see, the computational times are huge. Okay, if we take a tolerance of convergence 10 minus six, even at this uh, point, we uh, the proposed uh, method does much better uh, than the schemes. Here, the Runge Kuta only uh, does better with the ma uh, for the mean absolute error. But again, if you see here the computational times, you see here the OD45, because this, this system takes a lot of time, it takes uh, more than, um, than 68 seconds. Okay, while our scheme takes uh, 0.2 seconds, right? And it is comparable with the reference solution but with, uh, uh, with the same accuracy uh, uh, and even less than the reference solution to, to, to go at these levels of accuracy. And then there is a higher problem. This is a old eight nonlinear stiff, stiff ODEs. And again, we apply the thing. So, so here, also here, you see that the OD15S does not do the good job at 10 minus six. And the same, our scheme with the numerical accuracy outperforms you see 10 minus uh, 5, 10 minus 7 for different tolerances, the, the, the other schemes. And the, the, the good thing here that it outperforms them also in terms of the computational time. Okay, so it, it appears like a, a good alternative to the well-established numerical analysis techniques in order to solve such problems. Okay, and then we can do the same thing to solve PDs. Not exactly the same, it's a little bit transformed, but I won't go into the details. And actually, you, the, the, the interesting thing here is to plug this with the numerical bifurcation analysis algorithms, okay? In order to, to track uh, uh, solutions of, of branches with machine learning, with this scheme. And this is what we did. And we did that for the nonlinear viscous Berger uh, equation. 
and uh, uh, using Dirich Lenn von Neumann, we have different actually uh, uh, behaviors here. So the bottom line here is that you have sub gradients of the nonlinear viscous burger. And here you see the solution profile on of, of our scheme. And then we have used finite difference and finite elements. And the nice thing here, so we have used the proposed scheme with sigmoidal activation functions and uh, radial basin functions. And you see, as the size of the grid increases, we get better numerical accuracies. This is the numerical accuracy, better numerical accuracy, even uh, from the finite elements, okay? While the finite difference completely fail at the subgradients, okay? And here you see also the execution times where all in all, we are also beat the finite elements when uh, the, the, the size of the grid increase. So we beat them both in accuracy and the commutation cause. And this is the first time that something like that was shown in the literature, okay? So the, the thing is that we can approximate, we can use deep learning, but can we beat also computationally? And this is an indication that we may do, okay? And we constructed also the bifurcation diagram. And again, our scheme with sigmoidal and radial basis functions, as the size of the discretization increases, it results to much better numerical accuracies of, let's say, of the turning point of the bifurcation diagram, okay? And then we did that for the two-dimensional PD, a, a high-dimensional system, let's say, okay? And the results were the same. I'm going a little bit uh, fast here. And here, actually, you, you, you see the, the L-infinity error that uh, we got. This is with finite differences, which is the finite elements in the black-blue, which means that we have a very small, uh, very big uh, numerical accuracy, small errors. It's our proposed uh, scheme, okay? So uh, also for two-dimensional PDs, the, the accuracy is bigger and we were able uh, also to better approximate uh, the, the turning point, okay? And now let me present you also the time-dependent problem, which is the kuramoto sivansinski equation. And this is actually a, fa a very famous equation of nonlinear partial differential equation of fourth order that gives rise to chaos. And we used uh, this scheme. So this, you see the original so solution that have been uh, calculated using OD15S with tolerance 10 minus 14. And this takes a lot of time. And this, you see the approximation error of our scheme uh, taking just 10 minus 3 of tolerance. So until 100 is almost perfect, then because also because of chaotic and instabilities, because we're using a, a finite different scheme, this is not appropriate for the, for the thing, but it's appropriate to compare the same scheme with the different time integration methods, uh, shows the, 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 the efficiency of our scheme compared, you see the big errors that one gets with the OD15S, with lower tolerances, and with, um, um, with the uh, OD23S, which is a different stiff solver built in in the MATLAB suite, okay? So I have told you about the forward problem. I told you about ODs. I told you how you solve the time-dependent PDs, scratching the surface. And now I will show you how you can construct PDs. So our assumption is our, the comp our complex system, right? That comes from the interaction of particles, complex fluids, but also atoms, persons, the spread of epidemia, right? Bacterials that they move. Uh, can be as emergent behavior described by the PD of this form, right? And D here uh, on the order of N. We have a diffusion operator of a differential operator of the order of 10 and a nonlinear differential operator, okay? So the first thing that one has to do is from this data that you don't know what they present and what, so there are experiments. So you, 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 for example, you, what you can do in bacteria, positions and velocities, right? Also in atoms, but the, the position velocities are not the real variables, right? In fluids are the densities and the temperature in a room, right? But you, you don't make the, 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 the link that the, the kinetic energy is temperature. Okay, and exactly we want to make this link. We want to discover the temperature from the velocities and the positions, okay? And this is where manifold learning comes into the play. And uh, uh, here we, we use a framework, we propose a framework based on diffusion maps, which is a nonlinear manifold uh, algorithm to find the intrinsic uh, dimension of the manifold. That is from the 
uh, an avocado uh, uh, degrees of freedom of, 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 of molecules to find the single variable with the temperature. Okay, and this is amazing. And actually, what we propose is to find the parsimonious diffusion map because the uh, thing of the diffusion maps like the eigenfunctions of the diffusion operator. Okay, and if you project this, the data in these eigenfunctions, then you end up to a low dimensional system. I, I say this very simplistically. There's much more inside, and the diffusion maps have been introduced by, by Ron, uh, Ron Kaufman at Yale, and Yanis Kevrikidis has worked a lot of this on, uh, on complex them with dynamical systems. And this is a joint paper with him. And uh, actually, we, we, we have used this to find the interesting manifold, to find the dimension of the complex emergent dynamics, okay? And uh, uh, to, 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 to see which one of, of them are, are, are good uh, uh, vectors, okay, to, to, to that, that span our low dimensional manifold, is that we, uh, we created a, a regression loss. And actually, uh, we take the, the difference between the, the uh, embedded dimension as created by the diffusion maps and our observables, okay, which is the G function here. Actually, the G has an R number here that come from, from a microscopic data simulator. And now, after we find the intrinsic dimension of the manifold, that is also a set of, of features, we're doing also feature selection with diffusion maps with the mi minimization of the regression loss, okay, with the observables, we then can, can learn the right-hand side of the partial differential equations from the trajectories of, of the data in time and in space. And this can be done using the proposed scheme or deep learning, okay? So the schematic of this is like that. Thank you, I'm, uh, three minutes is enough. Uh, I have the microscopic observations. I, 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 I use actually diffusion maps to, to extract the manifold and to do feature selection. And with these variables, I train a deep learning or a random projection neural network. I learn the effective partial differential equations. And from this, I can plug into inside the numerical bifurcation analysis tools in order to do bifurcation analysis. And this is what we did for the Fijuna Gumo model, which is a two, uh, a two, uh, two one D PDEs. It's a reaction diffusion equations, parabolic with von Neumann. Here is the grid of initial conditions in the U and the V space that we have created. So we have created um, 7 million points, okay, from uh, uh, in time and in space. And actually we have used diffusion maps to identify what are the correct set of, of variables. And out of surprise, and big joy, we reconstructed the Fijuna Gumo. We said that for the Fijuna Gumo, you need the, the mean field velocities and the diffusion terms, okay? And based on these PDs, we were able to reconstruct the bifurcation diagram without having equations directly from data, okay? So I want to say also here, the proposed method that we used was 40 times a shallow feed for one network, so for 7 million, Points. Imagine for much bigger uh, dimensionality reduction. So, in concluding, so we propose the new numerical scheme based on machine learning for the numerical solution of both the forward and inverse problems complex systems modeling. Uh, our scheme takes advantage of the johnson lindestrauss theorem for the random projection, which results to faster computational times. And our scheme was computed with traditional numerical analysis. Uh, uh, schemes, both for, uh, uh, for ODs and NPDs like finite difference and finite elements. And here are some in indicative uh, papers. And uh, uh, all the credits, most of them go to, 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 the, to the students, actually, that we all know that they do most of the work and they don't sleep during the night. And Gianluca Fabiani, which is my PhD student in Scuola Superiore, and his PhD actually is on the uh, forward and inverse problem uh, solution. And uh, Evangelos Galaris, which is about to defend his PhD, and uh, he was also in, in this uh, in this area, and then my collaborators of years, uh, Dr. Lucia Russo from uh, CNR, Instituto di Scienze e Tecnologie per l'Energia e Mobilità, uh, and uh, the colleague from, uh, from Princeton uh, that we are tightly collaborating uh, in this system, Jan Skevrikidis from, uh, from Johns Hopkins. 
Okay, and uh, actually we start scratching this, uh, the, the surface, as I said to, to, to the students, uh, we are prehistory. I mean, in 1000 years, we'll be much closer uh, to asymptotically uh, converge to, to the objective reality. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Costas, for uh, your seminars, for your uh, presentation. Very big uh, quantity of work you have done. I think that, uh, I don't know if Roberto wants to make uh, a question. Okay, he's here yeah. with us. Hi, Costas. Um, nice seminar. Uh, thanks a lot for... Uh, Thank you for reminding me. It was a for this, uh, honor. A huge huge yeah. vision, uh, a lot of problems. So it's difficult to enter in details, but uh, I'm, uh, I wonder, uh, I, I don't understand really in the in inverse uh, problems. So when you want to characterize from um, samples of the experimental mm -hmm. solution, um, how do you use effect, in practice uh, your approach to recover uh, the coefficients of the equation? I, I, I Ah, th this, is, this, is a, this is a nice, uh, this is a nice question. So here I didn't uh, show you. Uh, yeah. So one problem of uh, uh, problem of the inverse problem, for example, of PDs, that I, I to, is to identify from data missing coefficients, missing parameters, or even missing boundary conditions. This is also the inverse problem, right? So I didn't show you this. Uh, this is also an open problem, right? And one can handle with this methodology, right? So we know, let's say, the keller segel and we're missing the coefficient of the chemotactic uh, sensitivity term. That yeah. is uh, the gradient of a chemoattractant times yeah. the, the, the profile of the chemoattractant times C, okay? Yeah. And we don't know C, right? And this we can find from data. This we can find from data with, uh, with machine learning, actually, all right? So we, we can let's say, have the PD with the physics in form and plug in the differential operator that we know and then solve for the parameter. And then we can try to solve also for the boundary value problems, okay? So what I present you is a, is a different, is more coarse, that we don't know nothing about the form of the equation, right? And we want to identify, is there an advection term? Is there a diffusion term? Is there a nonlinear reaction term? And this is what we did. Actually, we explore the space of advection, of diffusion up to th third order, okay? And also the, the reaction term. So what we did is that we identified that the fijuna gum equation and the, the simulations were from Boltzmann, uh, Lattice Boltzmann simulators that uh, uh, Gianluca developed is a, is a uh, Q3 simulator, okay? Uh, um, uh, to identify the necessary fundamental terms in the PD. So from all these, you know, combinations of diffusion terms and advection terms, we found out that one needs the diffusion term for the one variable, the diffusion term of the other variable, and just the mean field quantities. No advection terms, no high order, uh, uh, no high order derivatives. Okay, and based on them, we learned that as a black box. But you understand that it's very important that you know that your equation can be written as a diffusion reaction equation, right? It's not, it's not like, let's say, hyperbolic, right? Or a diffusion advection term. This is very important. This is the first step. Okay, this is what we, we show to you. So there are many open problems here. I mean, the minutes. Okay. Uh, What's the, the rate of convergence of this? Uh, kind of a identification problems because usually mm. the main problem is that, the, that the computationally you have a sort of or, or, or steep wall i mean it's very hard and uh, in particular if you look at two-dimensional problems uh, to reconstruct uh, a vector field uh, of velocity uh, computation is very hard usually so this, how do you deal with this kind this of is exactly the problem uh, roberto this is exactly at the heart of this thing uh, and I would say that if you have a, a very large uh, uh, set of data, then you will, first is about storage, then it's about how you will process that. So we have 7 million for a simple, very one-dimensional problem. 
So you have to go in 2D or 3D. We're talking about maybe billion, right? So the, the, the computational demand is, is, is huge. It's not about learning from a deep learning thing. The thing is also to have, okay, we have this, right? A huge cluster that is, they can solve that. So I, I, I found out recently, I mean, that how much, I mean, thousands of euros that we pay for, um, for um, clusters, right? For, for, for the electric consumption, right? So the, the cost is it's huge. And uh, what we saw this with uh, random projection neural networks in this uh, in this paper, that uh, uh, this structure uh, seemed to be a good alternative to deep learning uh, structure, which have many many parameters, maybe thousands of parameters to be identified, right? And we saw that with a very simple uh, simpler uh, structure like the random projection structure, uh, on 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 comparison with the shallow deep learning scheme with the two hidden layers, is a shallow deep learning, shallow feed-forward neural network, we're able to, to do that 30 times faster, okay? With the same accuracy, with the same accuracy, okay? okay. So, um, of course, this is dra dramatic, uh, I mean, uh, think, uh, you can take results in one day while in the other you have to wait th 30 days. So, I mean, I didn't say that we we found you know the uh, the fire, we, but um, we didn't, many people work on this. Okay, uh, but we said that there are alternatives to deep learning that there are open problems, and we maybe. Sorry, what you are saying is, in particular is that if you if you insert more information on the system. You can avoid the computational cost of uh, yes, exactly, of exactly, computer, exactly, yes, by, exactly, by and intelligent and intelligent numerical analysis techniques or um, let's say mathematical fixing numerical analysis. Yeah, that is the physics inform uh, things. So you, so you you can you can help your system to learn, right? So for example, you, if you have the boundaries as we do in final differences, you can plug the boundaries into the equations, mm -hmm. all right? So we do the same thing. You don't need to, to solve also an objective function. So you, you, you write your entire function in order to, to, to satisfy the boundary conditions. And you help the systems a lot with this, okay? Okay, okay. Okay. Costas, the bye, codes... Bye. Yeah, have yeah. No, no, okay. Costas, uh, the codes you have uh, developed uh, for people in Teresig are freely available. Uh, are available uh, upon the publication of the okay. of the papers of oh, the papers that have been published? They are available, yes. Ah, okay, okay. They are written in MATLAB because um, in MATLAB and Python. Uh, MATLAB and Python for the machine learning part, I yes. suppose. Yeah. Uh, okay, 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 okay. I don't think that uh, there are uh, any more questions. So we can uh, thank Costas and we can- Thank uh, you. Her. Yes. And thank you can... again for reminding me. Uh, thank you for uh, this uh, impression. I think that uh, your uh, work uh, uh, was really impressive. Uh, indeed, uh, there is uh, some comments, a good talk and impressive work. Thank you, I appreciate uh, that. Yes. And I'm, I'm open to collaborations. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, it is a good stimulus for us. Because we need many, many um, people. I mean, it is a disciplinarity, and of course, we don't know everything, so we won't help. <laughs> uh, there is, I don't understand if Jean Francois wants to make a questions because he uh, he wrote wait. Uh, ah, okay, wait. This a question by Jean Francois. Yes. Is uh, a moment. Uh, ah, how about the theoretical about? back and forth process from inverse to direct problems? Ah, very, uh, Jean-Francois, very nice, uh, very nice question. Uh, I don't have a solid question, uh, but the, the question, uh, answer, uh, but, but the question is, is, is nice. So think of a non-autonomous system right uh that you have to do simultaneously the forward uh solution based on the identification of the dynamics this is amazing so if uh, you want we can discuss about this and uh, this is 
very interesting indeed. Okay, so I, I talked about autonomous system. Non-autonomous are much more complex. It's about back and forth from inverse and direct problems. So I would be happy if you uh, if you know uh, and or in this, I would be happy to discuss this with you. If you have a problem that we can deal. Okay, from Greenbest to direct or vice versa, said uh, Jean-Francois. Uh, people is waiting for your repo, obviously, <laughs> because uh, they are uh, waiting for your for your uh, published papers, but I suppose especially for your codes implementing the methodology, because it is very interesting that you have both uh, good results in approximation, but especially in the computational times so with the respect the, to yeah, the yeah, yeah, that sure. you are, Art, absolutely. Okay, I sure for Jean Francois for collaboration. So, again, thanks to Costas. Thank and, you. Uh, and we meet uh, again with uh, the AM seminars in uh, two weeks uh, with uh, Alessandro Rudi from uh, the Noria. And uh, the next seminar is uh, the 9th of March. Uh, and uh, But we have also another appointment that is the next week with uh, the general uh, seminar at with uh, Giovanni Ciccotti. So we wait uh, for the general seminars on next uh, Wednesday, the 2nd, and for the IM seminars uh, the, in two weeks, uh, the 9th of March. Thanks, everybody. Yeah, thank you. Bye. Thank you, Gott.